100 Proofs the Israelites Were White by True Feds. Number 1. The Saxons, aka the Sons of Sac. Have you ever known any people being called after Isaac? When God made a covenant with Abraham, he also made a prophecy that the future Israelites would be called by his son Isaac's name. This is repeated twice again in the New Testament by Paul. Paul was very aware of the reality of where the lost tribes of Israel were. So which race today is named after Isaac? Who was Paul referring to? In the name Saxon, which is modernized from Sac and son, the I has simply been dropped so we can read Sons of Isaac. To understand this, when the Assyrians deported the Israelites around 700 BC, the Israelites, who some called Scythians, began calling themselves the Sake Sune. The Sake or Israelites eventually traveled up through the Caucasus Mountains into Europe and this is where the name gradually got modernized to Saxons. The white race today, the Caucasians or Anglo-Saxons, Celtic Germanic peoples are the real children of Isaac and inherited all the promises. God's prophecies never fail and still hold true after 4,000 years. Check out the website truefids.net and definitely leave a comment at the bottom. Number 2. They would follow the Ten Commandments Ever since the Ten Commandments were given to Moses on Mount Sinai, only one race has consistently followed them all the way up to this day. You find law and order in every white society. The common law we have today was built upon these very Ten Commandments. You find it in every white society. But completely absent in any other races, countries and laws. Whites are the true and only descendants of the Israelites. Number 3. America's flag, the 13 stripes, is the 13 tribes of Israel. Although Jacob, Israel originally only had 12 sons, which later became the 12 tribes of Israel, we must remember that Joseph, the 11th son, passed his inheritance onto his own two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Jacob made these his own sons and blessed them, thus making it a total of 13 tribes. America was founded by these very 13 tribes and it was founded by white Europeans. The American flag has 13 stripes for this reason. Each stripe representing a different tribe, America was the inheritance of Israel. 4. To spread across the whole world Over the past few thousand years, only one race in history has truly accomplished settling the entire world, populating every continent, to every corner, every campus covering the whole earth completely. Prophecies such as those in Isaiah are full of Israelites blossoming and spreading everywhere. Looking at maps only a century ago, you can clearly see the extent of white civilization. There is no other race throughout our entire history that can claim to have fulfilled these prophecies. No other race except the white Europeans can therefore truly claim to be the Israelites. 5. To be known as sons of God, Christians. Only one race calls themselves Christians universally, at least up until only a few decades ago, and for centuries every white country in the world proudly called themselves a Christian nation. This was without exception across the board. There were no non-Christian white nations. There is a certain prophecy in Hosea that the children of Israel, who were about to be deported, would one day at a later time be called the sons of the living God. In other words, be called Christians. So which race has lived up to that? Which people has always proudly called themselves Christians? Which people throughout history has even been identified as Christians? We understood that we, our brethren, were one race of people united under Christ, our Savior, our King, our God. 6. Israel's new home to be to the northwest. Whilst the children of Israel did conquer and settle in the lands of Canaan, it was prophesied that they would eventually have a new home. This home was to be to the north, to the northwest. So which countries are northwest of Palestine? Well, all the countries within Europe of course. From all the dispersions during and after the Exodus, the children of Israel gradually spread into, colonized and conquered Europe. 
It is obvious that Israel can only be the white Europeans and their new home was Europe and from there all other white nations over the world which were founded by the European people. Number 7 Adam means ruddy to blush in the face when Yahweh created the first ever man in his image and his likeness. He called him Adam for a reason. The name Adam has a meaning, it means to blush or show blood in the face. Only the white race has red rosy cheeks, is capable of blushing and can show colour in the face. Since all the children of Israel descended from Jacob, from Isaac, from Abraham, from Shem, from Noah and all the way back to Adam, it is obvious the Israelites must have been white and ruddy just like all their ancient forefathers. 8. Christ sent the apostles only to the lost sheep of Israel. Christ was very pacific when instructing the apostles where to go and where they were to travel to. Why did the apostles travel to Europe? Why did they not travel to China or Africa or anywhere else? Because they had all dispersed into Europe, Christ's ministry was all about bringing his lost sheep back into his flock and as he explained, they would hear his voice and all become one flock once more. Christ specifically commanded the apostles to only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and nobody else. Europe transformed completely into a Christian continent and this can only be the will of God, regathering his people once more as prophesied. 9. Which race has truly spread the gospel? Who brought Christianity into the world? Only one race, the Europeans, the bride of Christ, the children of Israel. When the twelve apostles and followers of Christ began to spread the gospel into and all around Europe, the people heard it, they believed it, they accepted it, it ignited the Holy Spirit and they began to continue to spread it themselves long after the apostles were gone. It took but one wave of apostles into Europe, one wave of a relatively small amount of people to change Europe forever, yet it has taken an endless non-stop wave after wave, century after century of missionaries into other nations to attempt to maintain a semblance of Christianity and even then Christianity struggles in those lands. Once the missionaries stop, Christianity dies out and they return to their own native religions. Christ made it clear his sheep hear his voice, he knows them and they follow him. Europe has still remained Christian ever since that first wave came and this is because the whites of today are the real true children of Israel. 10. The Bible prophesied of a new language. It was prophesied that the ancient Hebrew language spoken by Abraham and his descendants was to die out permanently and become a dead language forever. A new language was to be given to the children of Israel. Israel. This new language is English. If you include people who speak it either as their main and second language, it is by far the most spoken language in the entire world. The most modernly recognized Bible in the world is the King James Bible, also written in English. Virtually every white person speaks it, thus universally, English is that new language for the children of Israel. If anyone claims to have revived Hebrew or to be speaking in the ancient Hebrew language today. Are they not denying God? Are they not calling him a liar? In truth, any and all of these modern Hebrew languages are only bastardized versions. Far from the original Hebrew, our ancient forefathers spoke. Real true Hebrew is dead and English has now replaced it. Number 11. Paul's letters were to Europeans and Europeans only. There are eight letters in total addressed to the European nations. Rome is Italy of course, whilst all the others with the exception of Hebrews were located in Greece and Asia Minor, which were populated by whites. Hebrews of course is simply another name for Israelites coming from Eber, an ancestor of Abraham. Why did Paul not write to any other continent? The answer is, the Israelites were almost exclusively found in Europe only. Most Europeans had forgotten their heritage by this time, turning to paganism and Paul's ministry was to bring the people of Europe back to Christ. And this fulfills the prophecy in Hosea where Israel would commit adultery on Yahweh, cheating on him if you will with numerous other religions, worshipping other false gods. However, eventually to return back to Yahweh through Christ who is Yahweh, thus returning back to their original first husband.
Number 12, the Abrahamic covenant, which race today fulfills this? When God made a covenant with Abraham, he made a promise of an eternal covenant with Abraham's descendants, that many nations and kings would become of them. Whilst future promises to the children of Israel had conditions, this promise had none and would be fulfilled no matter what. His seed would come out of his loins. This is physical seed, not spiritual. His descendants inherited the promises. Where did all these many nations, kings and rulers appear? What race can truly fulfill that prophecy other than the current white race? Number 13. Jesus was white just like his people. Are there any biblical descriptions of Jesus? The Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than ruby. If Jesus was a Nazarite, then how could he be dark-skinned? Furthermore, if he was a descendant of Adam, how could he not be white and capable of blushing? Are there any historical descriptions of Jesus? The Roman consul Lentulus wrote a letter to the emperor, and in it he describes the condemned man, Jesus of Nazareth, as having blue eyes and blonde hair. Pontius Pilate, a second witness in a letter to the emperor of the time, Tiberius Caesar, also describes Christ with golden colored hair. If Jesus was white and looked like many modern white males today, then what did the rest of the Israelites look like? Is it not obvious? Number 14. America, the only truly Christian nation from its inception. With the New World Conquest, many British and European nations and colonies were founded abroad all over the world. They were founded by white Europeans who were all Christians. Their morals and laws were based on Christian laws. No other countries in the entire history of mankind's civilization were ever founded from their origin as Christian ones. They all had to be great gradually converted. America is especially exceptional as once independent, he had no king ruling over it and very much like Israel in the period of the judges, the constitution put God and God's law above everything, making it truly a Christian nation. What did some of the early founding fathers have to say about Christianity? It is impossible to rightfully govern a nation without God and the Bible. George Washington. I am a real Christian, that is to say, a disciple of the doctrines of Jesus Christ, Thomas Jefferson. These nations followed God and were Christian because the people were Israelites. Number 15. To transform deserts into thriving nations. Isaiah is full of prophecies of the founding of America, and here we have the early American colonists transforming America from a desert into a virtual paradise. Who colonized America? The white Europeans. America never started as a great nation, and in many regions it was a desert. There are deserts found everywhere all over the world, but only the Europeans have truly been able to to transform them into beautiful countries. They had no aid, no help, just their faith in God. And God promised the Israelites they would succeed wherever they went. And is this not fulfilling those very prophecies? Number 16. To have control of all the seas. Only a century ago, the British Empire, American Republic, and all the other white nations combined collectively controlled all harbors in the world and effectively all oceans and all seas. This fulfills God's prophecy that the Israelites, the white race today, would control all the seas in the world. Only in the past decades, the end times, the last days, has that all suddenly changed. Number 17. All major inventions and technology is white. Virtually every invention from the wheel to electricity to aeroplanes to the TV set in your living room and an endless list was invented by the white race. All non-white nations lived in fairly primitive conditions until they had contact with white nations. Wherever whites have been removed from a nation. That nation has always declined backwards rather than forwards. You only have to look at the conditions of current South Africa to see that exact scenario playing out. 
How can any other race claim to be the descendants of Israel? Number 18. Israelite nations to be flooded with immigrants. No other nations have been flooded so severely with foreign aliens. Whenever Israel whites turned away from God, they were always punished. Today we are gradually turning away from God day by day, and are we not feeling the effects, the consequences? Satan, collectively the descendants of the fallen angels, is flooding the woman, the children of Israel, God's bride. The flood represents people which are being sent into white nations en masse to gradually breed us out and destroy whites forever. China remains Chinese, Nigeria remains Nigerian, and India remains Indian. Europe, on the other hand, is gradually being transformed into a multiracial nation and is declining rapidly. Number 19. The Union Jack is the Union of Jacob. Why is the British flag nicknamed the Union Jack, have you ever wondered? The name Jack comes from the older, earlier name Jackin. It is derived from Jacques, the French version of the name James or Jacob. In other words, the flag represents the union of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob. A side fact, interestingly, Jack, until recently at least, used to be the most common boy's name in the United Kingdom, Ireland and Australia. It's only fitting that they are named after their ancestor, Jacob, Israel. Number 20. All apostles have traditional English names. Were the apostles called Tyrone or Jasmine? How about Abu or Muhammad? No. The names you commonly see over and over again are John, James, Matthew, Mary, Simon, Peter, Paul, and and so forth. The apostles had traditional white names which carried on all throughout Europe to Britain and America over the many centuries. This is because the apostles were white, Jesus was white, and all the Israelites have always been white. Number 21. Paganism identifies who the lost sheep are. Throughout the history of the children of Israel, over and over again we find them turning away from God and embracing paganism. So if one was to find these lost tribes scattered abroad, what would you expect to find? You'd expect to find pagans. They were warned over and over again by the prophets God sent to them. Although many Israelites were already scattered in Europe, those Israelites from the Assyrians and Babylonian deportations eventually became the Germanic tribes swarming into Europe over centuries and centuries. So when the apostles were sent out into Europe, it's no wonder they sought out these pagans who were the genetic children of Israel. They may have forgotten who they were, but God's promises still had to be fulfilled. When they heard the gospel, they came to understand their ancestry, who they were and what where they came from, they accepted Christianity because it was the truth, because they were Israelites. Number 22. The Greek Migrations, Records and History In Greek literature, the legendary Dardanus founded the city of Troy, whilst his brother Calchas founded the city of Thebes. Both these brothers are listed as the sons of Zerah, the sons of Judah. Not all Israelites went with Moses, many instead went to Greece and Europe. Diodorus Siculus only confirms this, showing that these sons of Zerah became great leaders. Since kings were to come out of Judah, this only makes sense. The Pharaoh's line ruled over Israel, whilst the Zara line over the centuries came to rule over Europe. King Solomon was even compared to these two men to show how exceptional his wisdom was. Needless to say, a lot of the Greeks were therefore Israelites who had dispersed. Number 23. An elect race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Why did Peter refer to the European people this way? Because the European people were the lost sheep of Israel, the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Peter was merely repeating the same words Moses spoke to the same people, the children of Israel at Mount Sinai. This was repeated again in Deuteronomy. Peter understood that the people in Europe were the Israelites who had been divorced by God and at a time not shown mercy, but now under Christ were to be shown mercy. By accepting Christianity, these lost sheep 
return to God. 24. Divorced and dispersed could never return to Palestine if the children of Israel were forbidden, barred, and to be prevented from ever returning to Palestine, then who are the people there now? It could only be imposters posing and pretending to be Israelites. The real true Israelites, the modern European people, are being deceived and robbed of our own heritage. In fact, Malachi predicts that in the end time, Edom would return and rebuild Palestine, settling there. The Europeans and their offshoot nations in 2000 years have never been able to resettle back in Palestine. Any return, such as the Crusades or otherwise, have always resulted in disasters, leading to whites being kicked out soon after, as God promised he would do to the real and true Israelites. 25. The Descriptions of Kings David and Solomon Both father and son are described as ruddy and fair. This is a clear description of a white man. If David and Solomon were white, then what were the other Israelites? Like the name Adam, the first man, ruddy means to show blood in the face or to blush, something only the white race are capable of. Since David and Solomon were in Christ's genealogy, would he not also be white and ruddy along with all the other Israelites? 26. The Phoenicians originated from the coast of Israel. Around the Judges period, we begin to see the rise of a people generally called Phoenicians. They were a confederation of maritime traders. Rather than being a defined country, they instead operated out of port cities. They originated from Tyre and Sidon, and they began to expand into the Mediterranean, trading with all the other nations and even setting up many of their own colonies everywhere. They reached all the way to Iberia and even up to the coasts of England and Ireland. Now those two cities, Tyre and Sidon, were within the territory of the tribe of Asher. So all these Phoenicians were Israelites, mainly from the northern tribes. Many famous Phoenicians were clearly white. If so, what did the Israelites look like? 27. Early European nations named after the Hebrews When the Phoenicians colonized Spain, they called it Iberia, which translated means Hebrew land or land of the Hebrews. Now why would these Spaniards call it that unless they were Israelite Hebrews? Israelites would often refer to themselves as Hebrews. In Genesis, we learn that Abraham was referred to as Abram the Hebrew, and in the book of Jonah, even then, many, many centuries later, he refers to himself as a Hebrew. The word Hebrew comes from Eber, who was an ancestor of Abraham and the Israelites. Furthermore, even Ireland in the past was called Hibernia, again after Eber and the Hebrews. The great city of Carthage literally means new city in the Hebrew language. This all shows that white Israelites were colonizing Europe for centuries, long before the coming of Christ. Number 28. Christian Churches Worldwide in All White Nations Since the coming of Christ, white societies have built Christian churches everywhere, many dating back centuries and even over a thousand years. All other countries, their churches were built by white colonizers, which was left to them, many which are now torn down and destroyed. As the demographics of white nations is gradually changing, so is Christianity diminishing. Is that just a coincidence? A white Europe was Christian for centuries, and with the mass immigration in the past few decades, Christianity is dying. 29. America, the eagle with the outstretched wings. The eagle is the common symbol of both America and Israel. Is that just a coincidence? It was prophesied that the Israelites would come to a distant land and be given time to settle from Satan. On the American coat of arms, the eagle is one of the four main tribe symbols, other being the man, boar, and lion. The olive branch is the symbol of Jacob. Israel was often referred to as an olive tree or branch. The arrows are the symbol of the tribe of Manasseh, the brother of Ephraim, the two sons of Joseph. The 13 stars, 13 stripes, 13 leaves, 13 olives, and 13 arrows all represent the 13 tribes of Israel. America was founded by white European Christians who were and still are the true children of Israel. Number 30. To be nations of great agriculture wealth. 
When Isaac blessed his son Jacob, he made a prophecy that Jacob and his descendants Israel would be people of great agriculture. Only the white race has truly fulfilled this prophecy. White cultures have always typically been farmers and herders. They followed the footsteps of their Israelite ancestors. They were not typically bankers, panderers and lawyers. You will find endless fields of crops in all white nations, yet completely absent in other nations. 31. Judeans were indistinguishable from Greeks. Flavius Josephus in his book Antiquities of the Jews describes the Judeans as being indistinguishable from the Greeks except for their circumcision. In other words, they looked exactly the same. If a Greek and a Judean were standing in front of you, you would not be able to tell who is who. Greek history clearly demonstrates that it was a white nation. Even the great legends such as Achilles were described as having blonde hair. If that's the case, how could they be? indistinguishable from the Judeans unless the Israelites were white as well. Could any other race pass as a white European? 32. Romans were Israelites through Trojan Zara Judah. The Trojans, who were also called Dardanians after Dada, eventually lost their city Troy. After it was sacked, a small remnant led by Aeneas, a prince of Troy, fled and after a long journey of several years through the Mediterranean Sea, finally settled in Latium in Italy. This is also why the later Roman language is called Latin. Over time, his descendants, led by Romulus, founded the city of Rome, which gradually began to conquer and absorb the surrounding city-states, eventually becoming the Roman Republic and then Roman Empire. Since the Trojans were originally Zara Judah, the Romans would also be descendants of Judah, making them Israelites. The history of the founding of Rome and origin from Aeneas is confirmed by Strabo, who states that it is a fact. Since the Romans were white, then what would the Israelites look like? Further proof that the Romans were Israelites is in Paul's letter to the Romans. In it, he states that they once knew Yahweh, but they had turned God into a man, adding a whole pantheon of other lesser gods with him and even beasts. How could they have known God unless they were Israelites? 33. Spartan letter, they are the descendants of Abraham. In the 2nd century BC, the Spartan king Arius wrote an epistle to Aeneas, the then high priest in Judea. In it, he'd identified the Spartans as being fellow descendants of Abraham. The Spartans, also known as Lacedaemonians, were Dorian Greeks. They originated from the city of Dor, hence the name Dorian, in the territory of Manasseh in Israel. And this is how they were of the same stock from Abraham and were kindred. Since the Spartans were white Greeks and were of the same tribes of Israel, what would Israelites look like today? 34. James Epistle opens to the 12 tribes abroad. Many modern commentators claim that the lost tribes simply vanished and disappeared, never to be seen again, almost becoming a myth. James the Apostle, the half-brother of Christ, certainly believed that they were still around and even addressed them in the opening of his letter, referring to them as the twelve tribes in dispersions. Like Paul's letters, the Apostles' epistles were to the Europeans. They were teaching that the Europeans were the Israelites. They understood they, they had dispersed into Europe. 35 would keep the Sabbath day, Sunday, forever. In Exodus, we learn that God makes a holy day for the children of Israel and only them. Out of all the races in the world, out of all the nations, only one has maintained the Sabbath for the past 2,000 years, ever since Christ. Today it is known as Sunday. Whilst it can be argued which day exactly it should fall upon, only white nations have traditionally followed the six days of work 
and one day of rest as God commanded our ancestors. In fact, to most other races, the seven day week was completely alien to them until white nations colonized them. 36. Noah's sons were white, as were their descendants. Noah was pure in his generations, meaning he had not mixed with the fallen angels or their descendants. The word generations here could better be translated as descent, meaning his three sons were perfect as well, Shem, Ham and Japheth. We can prove that they were all white simply by looking at their descendants. It's well known that the descendants of Japheth settled in Europe, so they were white. Javan, for instance, became the Ionian Greeks who warred with the Spartans. If all of Japheth's descendants were white, wouldn't the two other brothers be white as well? But anyways, the Persians who descended from Shem and were white, the Greeks looked identical to them in all their art. The main difference was the Greeks commonly fought in the nude, whilst the Persians covered their whole bodies in cloth. The Greeks marveled at how pale and white they were because of this. The Philistines who warred with the Israelites, which were descended from the Egyptians and from Ham, are always described as white. If some of Shem's descendants were white, some of Ham's and some of Japheth's, then all the tribes that descend from them and Noah must at least originally have been white. 37 would all as a whole praise Jesus Christ. Since Christ's death and resurrection, only one race has consistently praised the name of Christ over the past 2,000 years, only one race as a whole willingly accepted that Christ is God in the flesh. The angel of the Lord predicted exactly this, that the Israelites would say, God has walked amongst us, that God himself came down as a man to die and to be resurrected for his people. Only the white European nations fulfill this. 38. The Scots Declaration of Arbroath of 1320 Robert the Bruce, King Robert I of Scotland, who along with his nobles issued the Scottish Declaration of Independence of 1320 to the then Pope, which clearly traces their Israelite roots, which shows that the Scots of the time knew they come from the Scythians, which is another name for the Saxons, that they were the scattered tribes of the children of Israel. If the Scots are Israelites who are white, what was the whole tribe of Israel? Sadly, our people have forgotten who they are and their heritage. 39. To be the chief amongst all the nations. White civilization has always dominated the world. The children of Israel took over all the other white races, making the white race we have today. Fulfilling God's prophecy and promise to Abraham, Israel was to be the chief amongst all the nations. Even on the modern UN logo and flag, we can see the 13 leaves on each side, representing are 13 tribes right under our noses in plain sight. 40. Revelation 1000 year reign is Europe's Christianity. In the Revelation there is a 1000 year period where Satan was to be bound in the pit and Christ's saints were to reign for this same 1000 year period, after which Satan was to be let out for a short while to deceive us all. So when did this all happen? Firstly, the verse afterwards, Revelation 25 should not be there and this is what causes so much confusion but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. In certain translations they've even put it inside brackets, because this was a verse that was never in the original manuscripts. The whole verse should really just say, this is the first restoration. What does that mean? The children of Israel were divorced and cast away from God around 700 BC, but once they accepted Christianity, they were once more restored to their position of ruling with God. Europe had virtually all accepted Christianity by 700 AD, and this lasted for a thousand years roughly, and this is what this verse is talking about. So around the end of the 18th century, around the time of the French Revolution, we see Christianity begin to rapidly decline and this is where Satan was unleashed from the pit and we are living in this stage now, awaiting Christ's return. The Christian monarchies were gradually disposed of, 
Atheism has been spreading ever since. If not full-blown Satanism, it's been downhill ever since. We are now enslaved by the banks and our societies are degrading rapidly. The year 1000 year reign has already happened and it was with the European people who are the saints, who are the children of Israel. 41. All heathen nations to be aligned against Israel. Christianity is the only religion in the whole world that is now being persecuted, that is being banned, that is being wiped from existence. Only the religion that has been predominant in all white societies for the past 2000 years is being pushed as a hate religion. Is this not exactly what the Bible described would happen? Furthermore, only in white nations are laws being changed to put other people and other religions before our very own people. Once again, is this not exactly what the Bible explained would happen to the children of Israel in the end times, in the times of great tribulation? How can any other people fit this prophecy? 42. The further away from Palestine they were to go, the stronger they would become. When the children of Israel were told they were going to be deported by the Assyrians and then later the Babylonians, each time God reassured them that he would protect them and that they would overcome the people wherever they went, that they would even come to rule over them. This is fulfilled with the deported Israel tribes which became known by many names, the Sake, Chimerians, Parthians, Scythians, Saxons, etc., who overcame and destroyed the Assyrians, Babylonians, Medes, Persians, and many other tribes. More so, God prophesied wherever the Israelite tribes were to go, the further they were to go from these nations of their captivity, the stronger they would become. Only the white Germanic tribes have fulfilled this exactly, forming nations in Europe becoming stronger and stronger the further they went. America founded by these very white European Germanic tribes being the furthest and also by far the strongest nation on earth. 43. Ephraim is Great Britain, the Commonwealth. Although it was prophesied that Abraham's seed, the children of Israel, were one day to become many nations, along with hundreds of other prophecies, there is one particular prophecy of them becoming a single great nation and a company of nations. So how did this come about? These very Pacific blessings were passed on to the two sons of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. In other words, Joseph Joseph's two sons were to have a greater inheritance above the other eleven sons of Israel. The multitude of nations or company of nations can only be referring to the Commonwealth of the British Empire, which includes Canada, Australia, New Zealand and South Africa, which means the descendants of Ephraim became Great Britain and largely settled these other white nations, bringing with them the other Israelite people from Europe, thus also fulfilling the prophecy that Ephraim would push the children of Israel to the ends of the earth. Can any other country on earth claim to have fulfilled this very prophecy? 44. Manasseh is America, a single great nation. Although Manasseh was the eldest of the Joseph's two sons, he inherited the second blessing. He was to become a great nation. This great nation, which exceeded all other nations of Europe, can only be America. No other country could possibly meet the requirements and no other country has ever come close to its power, influence and the wealth. No other nation has been blessed so highly above all others. Together one after another, the two brothers, Ephraim, the British Empire and then Manasseh, America, have dominated the world in the past few centuries. It's no wonder that even now they are considered to have a special relationship set apart from the other brothers, the other European nations. The word Yank or Yankee actually comes from Jack or Jacob. Since all Israelites descend from Jacob, this is no surprise that the Americans would refer to themselves as Jacobs or Yankees. 
45. Dan is Denmark leaving a viper's trail. The prophecy of Dan in Genesis was that the tribe would leave a trail like a serpent or snake. Now a serpent or snake leaves a mark behind it as it moves over the earth. So Dan, a remarkable people of farmers, warriors and sailors, left their imprint on ancient history wherever they went by naming places after their ancestor Dan. We even see this demonstrated in the Old Testament. Dan originally lived in the territory in the south of Canaan. In the early 12th century, 600 Danites sought a new territory in the north. On their way, they camped in a place in Judah which the Danites called Mahana Dan, meaning Camp of Dan. After they had smitten the people of Laish with the sword and burned the city, they called the new city Dan. Now in Hebrew, there are no vowels, so Dan could be D N. You could add any vowel in between, so Dan, Don, Dun, etc. As the tribe of Dan spread through Europe, many rivers were named after Dan, such as the Danube, the Donets, the Dnieper, and many other rivers. Even major cities all over Europe bear his name, Donegal, Dunkirk and many more. The country Denmark literally means Dan's Mark or the Mark of Dan. Its people were called the Danes. Even in their old Viking myths and legends, they believe they originated from an ancestor called Dan. They are the Israelites from the tribe of Dan. 46 12 tribe symbols in European flags. Each of the tribes of Israel gradually came to have their own symbols they used to differentiate themselves, often on flags and banners. Many of these symbols you can still find to this very day on many European flags. Coat of arms and other national symbols. Is this just a coincidence? Or did the lost tribes spread out into Europe during the Germanic tribe migrations and conquests forming the very nations God promised would eventually form and last forever? To list but a few examples, France had the Reuben Mandrake flower on its old national flag. Spain had the Simeon Castle symbol on its old national flag. Holland had the Zebulon boat symbol on its old empire flag. Britain still has the Ephraim Unicorn symbol on its coat of arms and America still has the Manasseh Arrow symbol on its coat of arms. Why is Europe full of Israelite symbols? Because they are the Israelites. 47. Israelite Symbols in European Names Even European surnames also commonly have the Israelite symbols throughout their coat of arms. Why is this? The European culture and people carried on their ancestry throughout the centuries. Our people were proud of their forefathers and origin. By studying your surname and especially searching for your own coat of arms, it's very likely you can have an educated guess as to which tribe you'd likely originate from and which son of Israel is your forefather. A simple Google search can reveal your coat of arms. Although over the centuries they evolved, especially in different regions and different European nations. However, a little research to your ancestry can reveal what region your ancestors originated from. 48. Free Lion Symbols and Other Trios When God appeared to Moses, he revealed his name to him as Yahweh, but also that he was the God of our free patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and this is how he would always be known. The free line symbols you commonly see on European flags represent our white Israel heritage of being the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You will find it everywhere in Europe, especially in England on the coat of arms, and even where it is part of the competitive sports team uniforms. Other European nations also commonly did this, although with other symbols. France used to have free mandrakes on its flag, Sweden free crowns, and every European nation commonly had their own unique way of displaying the free patriarchs. You can see the same thing on your own surname coat of arms often. The symbols will be a trio. Sadly, virtually all whites have forgotten their heritage, but there will come a time when we remember. 
Four we nine free kings prophecy Ireland Scotland England in Ezekiel God described how he would overturn David's kingdom of Israel three times before the return of Christ who is the true and last king of Israel when Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem Jeremiah fled to Egypt with the king Zedekiah's daughter Tiatefi taking with him the stone of destiny this was the same stone Jacob slept on and it was always used to coronate future kings of Israel on. Jeremiah was warned by God that Egypt was about to be invaded so once again fled, first to Gibraltar, then to Cornwall and then to Ireland. Now the king of Ireland was a descendant of the Judah Zaraline and upon arriving Jeremiah married Tiatefi to this king since she was from the Judah Pharez line through David, this reunited the two Judah lines. Whilst there were European Zara kings all over Europe, this was the only one that also descended from King David. The first overturn is when the throne was relocated from Israel to Ireland on the hill of Tara. The second took place when the throne was later moved from Ireland Carrick Fergus by King Fergus to Scotland and the final third overturn was when the throne was moved from Scotland Scone Abbey by King Edward I Longshanks to England. 50. The British Coat of Arms By looking at the British Coat of Arms it is full of Israel symbolism and gives us a history lesson. Britain is Ephraim ruled over by kings of Judah. The unicorn on the right is the tribe of Ephraim and notice it has chains around its neck. The chains show that Ephraim was given the birthright of first son by Jacob and nothing can undo that, the chains cannot be broken. The lion with the crown is the kings of Judah. Notice there is no chain, although Judah kings would rule, the curse of David assured that there would always be strife and kings would fight and replace each other. The little lion up top is Christ, this is of course removed in modern versions. The three little lions in the center top left is the three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The harp on the bottom left is King David's harp, this shows that the Judah Pharaoh's lion is in the throne of England. The lion on the top right is Judah again but the Judah Zara which all other European monarchs share and Du Er Montrant means God and my right used by the monarchs as Judah was to rule and be the kingly lion. 51. Daniel's Five Empires and the Germanic Tribes In Daniel's prophecy of King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he identified the five kingdoms that were to come. The statue in his dream represented these kingdoms, they were Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome and then finally the rock cut out from the mountain without hands which would destroy Rome and then form nations that would last forever. The mountain are the children of God aka the Israelites which were the Germanic tribes. They swarmed into Europe destroying Rome then forming new nations and gradually spreading across the whole earth. These nations are still here today and as God has promised they will last forever. No other people destroyed the fourth kingdom Rome, no other people can be the Israelites. 52. Israel and Judah to be recombined into one people. Jeremiah prophesied that although the children of Israel had failed to keep their covenant with God and would be taken away by the Assyrians, nevertheless one day God would bring them all back together, recombining Israel and Judah as one under a new covenant and this new covenant was Christianity. So in other words, Christianity was to regather these lost tribes all back together again. Which race of people has fulfilled this? Only one race of people accepted Christianity and the new covenant. So is God a failure and did his people reject him or are the European the same people as in the Old Testament? When the Europeans accepted Christianity they become one people once again as God had promised, all together under Christ reconciled to their God. 
53, Paul persecuted for spreading the gospel to the 12 tribes. In Acts, we see that Paul claimed he was attempting to spread the gospel to the 12 tribes of Israel in according to the promises made to our forefathers. For this reason, he was being persecuted by the Judeans, many of which were Edomite converts who had blended in and were pretending to be the children of God. Where was Paul traveling to in order to accomplish this? Paul was the apostle to bring the gospel to the lost tribes selected by Christ himself. He traveled exclusively to Europe. Is it not obvious the 12 lost tribes were the Europeans? 54. To possess the wealth of the whole earth. Over the past few thousand years, which race has truly possessed the wealth of the earth? Had the kingdoms of Europe, the British Empire, the Republic of America, and all the other white nations, it becomes clear that it is them, the white nations, are the Israelites. When Isaac blessed Jacob and gave him the birthright, he passed on all the blessings from Abraham and himself onto his own son, and over time many more subsequent blessings were passed on to his descendants that all stacked up. Even all the possessions of the heathen or non-Israelite nations were promised. So was this fulfilled? Did the Israelites fulfill all these blessings? Yes, and they are the modern European people. 55. Always to be a monarch on King David's throne forever. God promised David his line would reign forever, that there would always be a descendant on his throne. Can any race claim to have maintained that throne right up till now? Can any monarch prove their descent from King David? Only Queen Elizabeth. The ceremony used to anoint King David is exactly the same ceremony used for when Elizabeth became Queen of England and all the kings and queens before her. It has been passed down from monarch to monarch over the past few thousand years. It uses the same stone of destiny passed on from Jacob our forefather. Only white Europeans can possibly be the Israelites of the Bible. 56. Japheth to dwell in the tents of Shem. One of the prophecies of Noah was that the descendants of Japheth would eventually come to dwell amongst Shem's descendants. That means if we found Japheth, we'd also find Shem. So when and where did this happen? This is easily explained if you understand a bit of history and the locations of each of the clans and nations that came from the sons. The original layout was Japheth's descendants spread out into Europe. Since they were white, the Shemites would also have to be white as they are living amongst them, right? But anyways, all the tribes eventually got overrun and intermixed with the other races. Yet from Shem, God picked one man's seed to become Israel. They spread out into Europe, most specifically the Japhethite nations, and gradually colonized and even conquered them and ruled over them. The Romans came to rule over the Etrosians, the Iberians over the Tarshishians, the Spartan struggle, but later the Macedonians prevailed over the Athenians, the Parthians over the Persians and Medes, and so forth. So the whole white world, all the white nations were either mixed or replaced with white Israelites, and this is how this prophecy was fulfilled. 57. The British flag's two crosses are Alpha and Omega. In Revelation, Christ declares that he was the Alpha Omega. In other words, he is Yahweh our God in the flesh. Interestingly, the first and last letter of Hebrew in Ezekiel's time, Aleph and Tav, are Alpha and Omega, or beginning and end, and they were two crosses. One cross is just like the English flag, and one cross which is diagonal, just like the Scottish or Irish flag. When you combine them all on top of each other, you get the British flag. It is the marker mark, Alpha Omega, or one of Yahweh's names. Is it just a coincidence that Britain ended up with Alpha Omega on their flag as they spread across the whole world, eventually ruling over a quarter of the world with God's name on their flag? 58. To be a blessing unto all other nations. Whenever the Europeans have traveled to, wherever they settled, society has blossomed. Every country has benefited from having them there, be it agriculture, farms, housing, courts, schools, hospitals, and an endless list. Wherever whites have been forced out of nations, those nations quickly crumbled. Has any other people blessed the nations wherever they went? 
59, Paul's letters show the Europeans are the Israelites. In Romans, Paul describes them as a wild olive tree. This is a reference to when God called the children of Israel an olive tree in Jeremiah. The Israelites who went with Moses were given the law and they became a cultivated olive tree. Whilst the Roman ancestors who left the main body of Israel, they were not given the law and therefore grew up to be a wild olive tree. In Corinthians, Paul explains that their fathers were with Moses in the desert, that they were under the cloud with their Israelite brethren. Again, this is only possible if their ancestors were Israelites. The Corinthians were Dorian Greeks, like the Spartans, they came from Dor and they left after the Exodus. In Galatians, Paul explains that the law had been our tutor for Christ. The Galatians were Israelites who descended from those of the Assyrian deportations. The law had certainly been their tutor since its precepts would have been handed down through history in their tribal practices. Understanding the context of the letters shows that Paul identified these European people as Israelites. 59. To be completely blind to their identity. If there are people now that claim to be the Israelites and have the whole time for the past few thousand years since the time of Christ, how is it then that they remember who they are? God explicitly said that the Israelites would forget who they are, be put to sleep as it were, and it seems just about every people in the world now believe they are Israelites, except one, except one race race who remain completely ignorant, and that is the white race. They are completely blind. Is this not explicitly what God said would happen? Is this not the power of the Almighty to blind his own people? 61. To be blessed when obedient, but judged when disobedient. The children of Israel were always blessed when obedient to God, but punished when disobedient. The European people since Christ have consistently been the only race who had the law and obeyed it. Whilst obedient to Christ, we have flourished like no other people, but now, having turned our backs on God, we have rapidly declined. Does this not fit the exact consequences God gave to our people, the exact pattern of the old kingdom of Israel? This is because we are the same people. As Christ said, the law still stands. We are obligated to obey the commandments and above all, to love your God and love your people. 62. Gentiles. The correct meaning is nations. The word Gentile comes from the Greek word ethnos. It means nation. In the New Testament, it was referring to the nations that formed from the scattered tribes of Israel as they dispersed. It has never meant non-Jew. This is a complete lie. The term Gentile is a Latin word. It was first used in the Latin Vulgate by Jerome in the 4th century and it meant of the same clan or same race. Now around a thousand years after Jerome, the Latin term Gentile was suddenly changed to mean non-Jew. So not only do we have the wrong word, we now also have the wrong meaning. Christ commanded the apostles to go to these ethnos, the nations of the same clan or same race. And where do we find the apostles? Well, traveling to Europe, because we are the true sheep of Israel. 63. To be kind to the poor and our brethren. White Christian nations, like no other people, have went to great lengths to look after our poor and poor brethren in need. Brotherly love was always a commandment by God, by Christ, and we followed it. You will find charities, aid organizations, typically have always come from white nations as well. If other nations are supposedly the real Israelites, why are they not obeying God and helping their own people? 64. The meaning of Britain. The word brith means covenant and the word ain means land. Just like mountain means highland or land on a mount. When combined, brithane or Britain together as one word it means covenant land or land of the covenant. The British people knew they were Israelites of the dispersions, the people of the covenant, hence the name. The covenant being the one the children of Israel made with God on Mount Sinai. The word ish means people, so even British means people of the covenant. 
The British people alongside with the other Europeans are the physical descendants of those same people, the children of Israel. 65 named to be great, only one country has great in their name, that being Great Britain. So where does the great come from? None other than from God. The full meaning when combined with British is great people of the covenant or great children of Israel, which the British people and the rest of the Europeans certainly are. We have only forgotten where we came from as God promised would happen as punishment for disobeying him. Even the name England comes from Engels which means the horned one or unicorn. Ephraim were the people of the unicorn, so England meaning land of Ephraim. 66. Daniel's people the prince who destroyed Jerusalem. In the prophecies concerning Christ in Daniel, he gives us an exact timeline of when he would appear, but also informs us that Jerusalem would be destroyed by the people of the prince. Who are the people of the prince who can only be Christ? None other than the children of Israel. As we concluded earlier, the Romans were Israelites from Trojan Zara Judah, and that is how they were the people of the prince who destroyed Jerusalem. What did Romans look like? So what do Israelites look like? 67. A new covenant with the house of Israel and house of Judah. In Jeremiah, God speaks of how he's going to make a new covenant. This covenant is with the same people as the old covenant, that being the house of Israel and Judah. This means there are two possibilities. This never happened. The house of Israel and Judah rejected Christianity. God is a failure, a loser, and what he says does not come true. Or there is another possibility. The Europeans who accepted Christianity with open arms are the same people of the Old Testament. They are the house of Israel and Judah who God promised he would make this covenant with. God succeeded and his promises do come true. 68. To have nations based on justice and judgment. When the British Empire colonized the world, they brought with them laws, courts, and judges. For better or worse, they civilized the world, something completely foreign to those nations previously. All white Israelite nations have been built upon law, order, and judgment, something passed on from their Israelite ancestry. Our laws are built upon the laws of the Old Testament that God gave to our ancestors. More so, he promised to write these laws upon our heart so that we would naturally strive to follow them. The proof is found in the Romans who were dispersed Israelites. Although not receiving God's commandments, they still built a society based on the rule of law, whose legislative and judicial models of government still influence Western society to this day. Pretty much every European country in history has decreed their own set of laws, whether by the king or by an assembly of the people. America too, the first thing the founding fathers did after the re revolution was to draw up a legal body, the constitution, a bill of rights, etc. It is no wonder that the white nations are the safest places in the world as the law was written on our hearts as God promised he would do to the Israelites. 69. To lose a colony, America, then to expand. We clearly see here an example of how all future prophecies of Israel always relate to the European people and only to them. The British Empire owned the original 13 colonies of America. All colonists and Britain were white. How can any other race claim to be Israel? Once America revolted and became its own independent state, Britain went on to conquer other lands, thus fulfilling this prophecy. Who else can claim to have fulfilled this or other people? 70. Home to be invincible from outside forces. However, Israel would not be invincible from fighting each other or civil war. Neither would it be invincible from willingly allowing other people to come into their lands with free handouts to destroy our nations from the inside out. Neither would it stop us from choosing not to have children and slowly let ourselves become extinct. We see our new homes, Europe, America, Canada, Australia, etc. have never been overtaken. Has there been any other people who have accomplished this? What God promised to us? 
71. Every people wants to come to a white country. Every year millions of migrants pour into white nations. Never before in history has there been such a level of migration, all heading to one group of people. The question is why? Why do they want to come to a white nation? Why does it benefit them? What do they gain? God said he would bless the children of Israel above all other people on the earth and only the modern European nations have been able to follow the Christian principles which led to God blessing them. The truth is, the great nations we built or our ancestors built, everyone wants to be a part of it to share in our inheritance, but nobody wants to follow the commandments and build up their own country like we did. If another people were the Israelites, would they not be following the law? Would their nations not be far greater than ours? Would they not be blessed above all others? 72. Revelations 2 Witnesses Reveal the Identity of God's Chosen People The two witnesses are the two olive trees, which are also the two lampstands. In Isaiah, God reveals that these are none other than Israel and Judah. In Zechariah, that these are the Anointed One that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Since Christ is the Lord of the whole earth, then the European people have proven themselves to be the children of Israel by becoming the primary vessels of Christendom. In Isaiah again it says, Of Zion that the salvation thereof would be as a lamp that burneth. And Christ himself said that no lighting, well, no one lights a lamp conceals it, but sets it upon a lampstand that those entering it would see the light. And he also said, You are the light of a society, a city sitting upon a mountain which is not able to be hidden. The European people are that shining city on the hill, the lamp which could not be hid, and they are the light of the world. For only they out of all the world's people have tried to civilize the entire globe and bring it under the rule of law for better or worse. 73. Rich fertile Middle East reduced to deserts where no Israelites present. What happened to the promised land that was given to Israel? Why is it now but a desolate desert? What happened? The Bible clearly describes it as a beautiful lush country the children of Israel were being brought to. A further description of the fertile lands of Galilee Peria and Samaria during the time of Josephus, the time of Christ. Once the Israelites left those regions, we find the lands declined rapidly. Yet wherever the Israelites formed new nations, they transformed them into beautiful lush lands as God promised they would do. 74. The Old Irish Flag is King David's Harp The Old Irish Flag displayed a harp. This is the Harp of David, the one he played during King Saul's reign. It became the symbol of King David. Why did Ireland have their entire flag dedicated to him? Because they were part of the dispersions of Israelites who moved out and settled in Ireland. Furthermore, the Ulster flag is the red hand of Zara. Zara and Perez were brothers born to Judah as sons of Israel, from Tamar the line of kings. During birth, Zara's hand came out first and he received the firstborn birthright and this is why his symbol was the blood red hand or the blood red lion. 75. European pagan gods derived from the Old Testament As the Israelites dispersed into Europe, you'd expect to be able to trace a lot of their pagan beliefs back to their original teachings of the Old Testament. Many European pagan religions have the enemy being a great serpent along with evil giants. If you understand that the serpent is not a literal serpent, but simply all the evil races, the descendants of Cain and the Genesis 6 corruption all together as a figurative serpent. Whilst the giants appeared amongst them, such as in the lands of Canaan, you can see it's the same story as the Bible. It's the same people, the Israelites, passing on their oral traditions. Wodin or Odin, it's clear it's a derivation of the Hebrew Adon, which means Lord. Our people always had a problem of deifying ancient kings. Odin was a king who led the Germanic tribes into Europe. He was just a man, he existed. Loki, it's clear it's a derivation of Lucifer. Originally, the sea was hard, so Lucifer, or Lucky, or Loki for short. In others, Satan, the father of all the evil races, the head of the great serpent. In the end times, a great battle Ragnarok would take place where the Son of God, sometimes called Thor, 
would return and we'd all rise up together and fight this evil serpent race together. Is this not exactly what the Bible teaches Christ returning to save his people in the Armageddon? There are many more similarities. It all shows that the Germanic tribes were the dispersed Israelites and they were white. 76 God's Battle Axe to Fight in the Name of Christ when Isaac was put on the altar, his ownership was transferred from Abraham to Yahweh God. This included all his future descendants. Whilst Esau was rejected, Jacob who became Israel was accepted as well as his 12 sons. All the children of Israel carried over this heritage even to this day. We are all the servants of God. We collectively are Christ's body. As we read in Jeremiah, we are God's battle axe and weapons of war. Who defended Christian Europe from multiple Muslim invasions? Who put everything on the line to preserve Christian heritage? Who has proven time and time again they are willing to be the battle axe and put their life on the line for God? only the white Europeans. 77 Old Egyptian mummies were white just like the Israelites. Many dug up Egyptian mummies from the early dynasties, showed them with distinct white features such as blue eyes, blonde or red hair. However, it is always quickly covered up and hard to find. This shows that initially Egypt at least originally was all white. Later the Nubians invaded and overwhelmed Egypt and their genetic makeup up was changed forever. The Israelites were kin to the Egyptians who descended from Ham. They looked alike. You could not tell them apart. Moses could pass as Eva. In that case, the Israelites would have have to have been white if they looked like these Egyptians. 78 The Population of the Wilderness and the Original 13 American Colonies When Moses led the Israelites in the wilderness just before Joshua took over and led the invasion into the lands of Canaan, the population of Israelites can be estimated to be around 2.5 million and this was just prior to Israel becoming a new nation. When the 13 colonies of Europeans had settled into America in 1775 just prior to the revolution which led to them becoming a new independent nation. The regathering of all the lost tribes into a new Israel, the population was also two and a half million. Is that just a coincidence or is it a sign from God? In both instances the children of Israel inherited new lands, conquered and subdued them building a great vast civilization. America was the first time since the period of Judges that the children of Israel had a nation where they weren't ruled over by a king. In the judges period they had God ruling over them alone and in the early American period they had Christ who is God ruling over them once more as America was completely a Christian nation at its conception. 79 To be known and recognized by their fruits. Going by what Christ taught us, should we not be able to recognize the children of Israel today simply by their fruit, by their societies they have built, by their customs, by the way they conduct themselves, by the way they are? Looking at European civilization over the past 2000 years, have they not strived with earnest to follow God? Have they not built civilizations all based upon the Bible commandments? Have they not shown kindness and compassion? Have they not loved their own people as Christ commanded? Along with all the other promises and all the great things God promised the children of Israel would accomplish and end up doing, have the Europeans not bore fruits to prove that they are the only true children of Israel. 80 Europeans DNA identical to ancient Middle Eastern. The DNA of the modern Europeans has been proven time and time again to match that of the ancient Egyptians as well as the ancient peoples that lived in the Middle Eastern regions. This shows that not only that the Israelites were white but all the people in those regions also once were white. So if they were white, 
what happened. Just a basic study of history can answer that. In around 600 AD, once the Muslim Arab conquest began, they conquered all of those regions mixing with all the people and this is why there no longer are any white people in those regions, along with large parts of Spain and Italy. By the 1500s, the Turkish invasions, who were Arab people as well, began pushing into Greece and conquered it. And this is why these regions and the people do not not resemble what they once looked like thousands of years ago and the Israelites were white and still are today but our old lands no longer are. 81. Josephus's Ten Tribes Beyond the Euphrates River When the Assyrians deported massive populations of Israelites, they put deported all 12 tribes as they came into Judea as well. Only the population hiding in the fortified city of Jerusalem was spared. This is proven in both scripture and the Assyrian tablets. Later, Babylon invaded Jerusalem and this time took all the remaining Israelites to Babylon. Only a small remnant of those eventually returned. Flavius Josephus understood this and explains that only a remnant of two tribes were in Judea around the time of Christ, that being Judah and Benjamin. Of course, there would have been some Levites as they were scattered amongst all the tribes. All the rest of Judah, Benjamin and the other ten were now beyond the Euphrates River. Josephus describes them as an immense multitude not to be estimated by numbers. Eventually, these lost tribes came to rule over that area. The only people who had such numbers were the Scythians, also called the Sake or Chimerians. Some of the tribes remained there becoming the Parthians. Some went north becoming the Germanic tribes, whilst others went straight into Europe becoming the Goths, the Alans, the Huns. This shows that the modern Europeans are the Israelites. 82. Mistranslations in the New Testament causing confusion When the King James Bible was translated, they only had access to a limited amount of manuscripts. Nowadays, we have a much broader range of ancient original texts to go back to. Furthermore, we have all the tools available to learn Greek and even translate the New Testament for ourselves. Upon doing so, it becomes obvious that there are many mistranslated verses. For example, in Acts 9.15, where Christ speaks to Hananias to go find Paul, it should read, but the prince said to him, Go, for he is a vessel chosen by me who is to bear my name before the nations and kings of the sons of Israel. This makes it clear the nations in Europe that Paul was sent to were the children of Israel. It should not say to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. This is deceiving as it separates people into Gentiles and people of Israel when there is no such thing. There are hundreds of other mistranslations such as this, which upon correction prove the Israelites were white and the Europeans are their descendants. 83. A Maritime People Colonizing Islands and Coast We have established that the Phoenicians were Israelites who were colonizing all the Mediterranean coast. Would it not make sense that future generations, future nations of Israelites would continue this and be sailors? We have already established that Israel was to spread and inhabit the whole world, but the prophecies go further predicting all the colonization of islands and coasts. As our nations grew, so did our fleets, and since Christ, the Europeans until now have been the only people with fleets and even armadas to encompass the whole world. Only because of our navies was the new world able to be colonized. No other people accomplished this. One only has to consider the original colonies of Australia, New Zealand, the Caribbean, both North and South America, and hundreds of other islands settled by white Europeans. No other people accomplished this. Nobody else could be the children of Israel. 84. Revelations 12 tribes survive the fall of Rome. Revelation speaks of a great calamity which is the destruction of the Roman Empire. The four horsemen describing the stages of the empire gradually decaying over time. Yet at the same time it reassures us that at least 12,000 of each tribe 
was sealed away, preserved or saved from its destruction. It should be noted that the tribe of Dan is not mentioned. This is simply because the tribe of Dan were not within the bounds of the Roman Empire, but rather instead they had travelled further north into the Scandinavian territories. It is clear therefore that these 12 tribes were within the Roman Empire or Europe, and in fact the rest of Revelation is all specifically talking about the European people because they are the Israelites, because from then on that's where the Israelites had moved on to and still are today. 85. The New Testament is in the Greek language. Even though Rome ruled most of the known world at the time, only the military and government spoke and used Latin. The vast majority of the population wrote and spoke Greek throughout the Roman Empire, including Christ the Apostles and most Judeans. They spoke Aramaic more as a side language, so it would be safe to say that the Apostles wrote the New Testament in Greek so as to make it understandable throughout the Greco-Roman world, which was an Adamic world. Orientals in the Far East, Nubians in the South of Africa, etc, etc would not be able to read it. Only over a thousand years later with the Jesuits did they begin spreading Christianity to other races of people, but always by force. But it is clear that Christ and the Apostles only ever intended the Gospel for the European people. 86. To be great when separated and set apart. The children of Israel were to be God's inheritance, a race of people to be separated from all other people peoples. This was a commandment by God. European culture has thrived and reached to heights no other civilization has ever come close to, and this was all done independently without the help of any other people. There was no foreign aid, no handouts. Is this not exactly what God described would happen to the Israelites if they remained a separate people? Have any other people been separate and by doing so and by obeying God's commandment risen above all other people. 87. In God We Trust became the national motto of America. America is the only country to have that motto, referring to the God of the Christian Bible, Old and New Testament, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, who came down as a man, Jesus Christ, to bring his people, his dispersed Israelites, all over Europe back to him. Why is the only country in the world with this motto a country that was founded by white Europeans? In 1965, America, when the national motto was created, America was 90% white of European descent. As Christ said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. The Europeans are his sheep his people, the Israelites. We hear his voice and we are drawn to him. 88. Graveyards in all white nations with Christian crosses. Across all white countries in their city halls, libraries, schools and even graveyard headstones you will commonly find biblical verses inscribed. These go all the way back over the centuries and you will not find this Christian history in any other nation. The modern white race truly are and always have been a godly race who took their faith seriously. Even in the Old Testament we find references to the early patriarchs first pre-flood, to the ancient Hebrews, to the Israelites referring to life after death, going to heaven, seeing our relatives again. You did not find voodooism, shamanism, reincarnation, self-enlightenment and all other religions which came from other peoples. Only now with our societies being overrun has Christianity suddenly declined. This is all because we are the same people as in the Old Testament. 89. Who exactly is Christ saving upon his return? Christ returns to save his people and this is exclusively the Israelites. No a people would be a race or family, that being the physical descendants of Jacob, Israel. He returns to save them. If we look at the world populations, only one is being overrun and being flooded. The population of Africans, Asians, Mexicans, Arabs and all the others have never been higher. They are booming. Yet the white European people are the only race that is declining in rapidly and in only a few decades will be at the brink. So again, 
who is Christ saving? Which people need saving? The scenario in all end time prophecies is the camp of the saints, saints being Israelites, surrounded and overrun. And is this not exactly what is going on today? The only people who fit that exactly are the modern Europe. 90. In the end times, Esau to rule over Jacob. It was prophesied that the tiny nation of Israelites would one day come to rule the world. But there is also another prophecy they would cultivate in a period of strife, a period of tribulation, a period called the time of Jacob's trouble. Despite this, God promised he would save us from it. A coinciding prophecy was that in the end times, Esau would come eventually to rule over the Israelites. And we must remember Esau had intermingled and married into the descendants of Cain. So all of Esau's descendants would be of that e evil race descended from Cain. The central banks have enslaved us and the Edomite bankers have come to rule over all of our people. Every day our taxes increase, our burdens get heavier and at the same time we are losing our countries. The same thing happened to the ancient kingdom of Israel and as God warned would happen if they turned away from him. And this is exactly what the Bible says would happen to the race of Israelites towards the end. The same thing was happening then to the Israelites and the same thing is happening now to those same Israelites. 91. Ancient Druids of the British Isles were Levite priests. There are many myths and legends about the Druids from pagan origins to human sacrifice. However, if you truly examine the history, you will find them almost identical to the Leviticus priesthood. In Exodus, it shows that the high priest wore a white robe and a golden breastplate set with 12 precious jewels, one for each tribe. The Druids dressed just just like this, they were judges, legislators, they were exempt from all taxes, their priesthood was hereditary and they also had a high priest. And this is because the British Isles were settled by Phoenicians which were Israelites and this is why they accepted Christianity so early on, as early as 50 AD, many centuries before Rome finally accepted it. You do not find Druids amongst any other people. 92. Early Artwork of Christ and the Apostles What was the earliest artwork of Christ and the Apostles like? How were they depicted? Looking at early pictures from churches, monasteries, caves and caves Catacombs, it's clear that Christ and the Apostles were always known to be white. The earliest known images that have survived to this day are around from the 3rd and 4th century. Initially, Christ had no beard with short hair, but later on the images began to add a thick beard and longer hair, and modern images often tend to follow this today. Early depictions, you can also clearly see the Apostles were clearly also white, just like Christ, and several of the notable Apostles, P.R. Paul, Andrew and John consistently look the same. There have been attempts to deliberately photoshop or alter pictures to show a different narrative, but we must remember the apostles travelled to Europe exclusively and there was never any doubt that they were white as long as all the other Israelites. 93. The word Arab means mixed, but also to darken. The word Arab originates from a root word Arab meaning to become evening, or to grow dark, to darken. Arab was used to describe mixed people. When Israelites mixed with other outside nations, their descendants were generally called Arabs, because their descendants would be mixed and darker. Arab is also a Hebrew word, so it cannot be claimed that this is a modern mistranslation or anything like that. If Arabs generally look like this, then the only way that's possible is if Israelites were and are white. 94. Stonehenges all across England and Europe who were the megalith builders in Britain and what purpose did these stone structures serve? Although the common belief is that they were pagans, there is a wealth of evidence to show that they were Israelites of the Bible. There are five main types of these stone structures that are found all over Britain. Menhirs, single upright stones, cairns, piles of rocks, usually in a cone shape, dolmens, a stone slab on three or more uprights, Cromlechs, a circle of stones, sometimes enclosing dolmens or barrows, tombs. Tumili, mounds of earth and stone covering a burial chamber. 
These type of stone monuments do not just appear in Britain, but are found all over Europe, Central Asia and Middle East, marking out where the Israelites migrated on their various dispersions. The Bible makes clear reference to these structures in many places. God commanded the Israelites to build these structures wherever they went, so if you find these structures all over Europe, would it not make sense that they are Israelites who continued the practice? 95. The Irish and Scottish kilts, plaids and tartans. Why do the Irish and especially the Scots love their kilts? We must remember that the Israelites for a time lived in Egypt. Although they lived separate, Joseph however was there from a very young age, second in command only to Joseph. Now the Egyptians wore kilts, or shenty as they were called, due to the severe heat. It is very likely that Joseph wore one, as well as his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born there. Since all other European nations, and even England, were continuously overrun by different competing Israelite tribes, many old traditions would be lost. But Ireland and Scotland were relatively protected as they were on the fringe, since they were settled relatively early by Phoenicians and even before that by Israelites from Egypt, would it not make sense that they would carry on this tradition of wearing kilts? Why else would you see a skirt in the freezing cold Scottish Highlands? We must also remember that Joseph was given the coat of many colours by his father Jacob. This tradition was also carried on with the kilt. The higher rank you were in society, the more colours you would, could display. 96. Welsh is virtually identical to Hebrew. As we discussed earlier, the original ancient Hebrew language has died out. However, many old Celtic languages still bear striking similarities to Hebrew. The most notable is Old Welsh, which clearly shows the migrations of Israelites, some of which settled in Wales. This shows the Europeans are Israelites. In 1675, Charles Edwards published a number of Welsh Cambro-Britannic Hebraisms, in which he showed that whole phrases in Welsh can be closely paralleled by whole phrases in Hebrew. For example, in Welsh, Anudon, meaning without God, in Hebrew is Einadon, and there are hundreds of other examples clearly showing the similarities. The Welsh even call themselves Kimri to this day, which is obviously derived from Kimroi or Kimrians, what the Greek and Assyrians named the lost tribes of scattered Israelites. Just a coincidence? 97. The cubit measurement continued throughout Europe. The cubit was a very commonly used unit of measurement, which we find all throughout ancient cultures and the Bible. It was roughly equivalent to 18 inches, and you also had a royal cubit, which was around 20 and a half inches. The ancient pyramids were built in cubits, and even before that, so was Noah's Ark. Much later, Moses' tabernacle also used cubits, as did Solomon's temple, they all used this measurement. So what people, what culture continued using this measurement? The European white civilization. Even today you commonly have 18 inch rulers or around 45 centimeters. In the middle ages it was called L's instead of cubits, and this is because it was roughly the length of a man's arm from elbow to middle finger, hence the name L from elbow. An L wand was used for a official measurement, so like an old-fashioned ruler, Edward I of England required that every town have one. You don't find this form of measurement in other cultures or other people. It was continued from the Old Testament people to the New Testament people, the white European Israelites. 98. To rule over other people. Is there any other non-European people that can fit this description? Have the Europeans ever been ruled over by non-Europeans? Except for now with this central banking system. Almost every other people have at least been under the dominion of Europeans at least once. We have always had vast prosperous nations, kingdoms and empires, and only recently with globalism, mass trade, the sharing of technology, as this began to change and have other peoples benefited massively. But only the European people have truly fulfilled this Bible prophecy. 99. The Seven Times Period of Punishment God warned the Israelites 
threats that if they did not obey him and turn their hearts to him, he would punish them seven times over. In short, a period in this sense would be 360 years, and seven times that is 2,520 years. To calculate a time from BC to AD, we just add the years on minus one. Manasseh was the first tribe to be conquered by the Assyrians, and this happened in 745 BC. Exactly 2,520 years later, America was born and became a nation on July the 4th, 1776. Ephraim was conquered a little later in 721 BC, and yet again, exactly 2,520 years later, Great Britain became a commonwealth in 1801. The great blessings given were delayed seven times over as punishment, but eventually Joseph's two sons got their blessings in America and the Commonwealth. You can very likely do similar calculations with other European nations. This only proves they are the Israelites. 100 must fulfill every single Bible prophecy. Lastly, for any race to claim to be the true Israelites, they must fulfill every single Bible prophecy to the letter without exception. God is perfect and so is his word. If a race does not fulfill even a single prophecy, that race is not Israel. In truth, only the white race of today, the descendants of the Celtic, Germanic, Saxon people fully and completely fulfill every prophecy in the Bible regarding the children of Israel. The white race today are Israel, the sons of daughters of Yahweh our God. As Christ said, I am the root and you are the branch. For more information and detailed explanations, check out the website truthvids.net and don't forget to leave a comment at the bottom. Praise Yahweh and Hail Christ.